Let's start looking at a pseudo test script which has just three OK calls and which one of gets a one, which is just a true value. And let's see what happens if we run this script. So we just run it, nothing special, it prints out three OK, three OKs uh, numbering them. Let's go back to the script and change this in the middle one into zero and it will print out not OK. Now what happens if we would like to print out something interesting from the test script when the test is going to fail. So just before the end we would like to check whether the test is failing and print out something. I saw this in a module called expect PM and I wanted to replicate it using the test more uh, system. So we load up the test builder module which is the back end of all the test more and the other testing modules and call its uh, new method. It will return the testing object. This is going to be the, the current uh, uh, testing object because um, this is, uh, I, I always want to say it's a unicorn, but it's a singleton. So it's a singleton. So the testing object is the one and only testing object. And then there is the is passing method that this testing object. So that, the, the test builder is the backend. That's what's counting. The, the number of tests and knows everything. So we are using this uh, method called is passing that will return true or false. And we can see it prints out 1, 0 and 0. So after it turned to be 0, it will keep being 0 even if the tests start to, if one of the tests are starting to be successful. So now we know that actually we could use this is passing at the end of the script, che checking whether it's true, and if, that's, if that is passing is true, then we know that everything is fine. But if is passing is returning false, so we can write if not is passing, then we know that the test failed, that at least one of the tests failed. And then we can use the diag function to print out something. For example, tell the users how to report the bug, and maybe tell the users how to install the module anyway, uh, which can be useful, especially for people who are not familiar with with uh, CPAN. I'm not sure if this is the place if um, a specific module should tell this, but this is how the test, um, the expect module uh, acted more or less. So I wanted to replicate the same thing. So now we have this script and we can run the test. And as you can see, because it's failing, it will print out this extra message. Now just to make sure that it works well even when everything is fine. Let's fix the test and if you run it now you can see the three times the OK printouts but not the extra testing report. Now that's really fine and uh, that's how I actually replaced the homebrew testing uh, methods in the expect module with uh, test uh, more. But uh, there is some problem. For example, the is passing is going to be true even if no test has been executed at all. So even before the first test, or as you can see, we commented out all the tests, we run the test script and it says 1. It says it's successful. And it doesn't print the extra uh, text because is passing is going to be true even before it's going to start out as true and it will turn to failure. So we probably need a different way in figuring out if everything is, is fine. And uh, for that we, we use, there's a, another method called the summary method uh, for, of the test, is, of this test object. This summary method actually returns an array, an array of true and false values, which are actually in this case are going to be represented by zeros and ones, uh, but we won't uh, care too much about that. So we just, let's start with printing out the return of, of summary. As you can see, it's one, zero, one, the three values uh, that returned by the, it's not the, the actual values, it's true, false. Um, so we could use this these information. We can go over the array and we could sum the numbers, but I'm not sure that it's always going to be 1 and 0, so I don't want to assume it. I want just to assume that it's true or false. So we have this counter, and we go over the elements of the summary and increment the counter wherever the summary was true. And then 
we can print out the, the same uh, text actually, but we can compare now the count that we received with the number of tests expected as returned by the expected tests method. So now we can print out the success or failure uh, just to test uh, how it, just to figure out how it works. So we use the ternary operator. Now if we run the script, you can see that it printed out failure because one of the tests has failed and because the number of, of successful tests weren't the same as the number of tests expected. If we sort of fix the test, then it will print out success, obviously, with the three OKs. So now we can use this to combine with the other diagnostic messages and we have what we wanted earlier.